This series of videos will cover the conversion from a mass airflow 1 to 2 7165 ECU on a 1989 IROC Camaro to a speed density 1 to 2 7130 ECU. Throughout the series, we will also discuss the reasons why one might wish to undertake such an endeavor. The ECU on all 1985 to 1992 third generation F bodies can be located directly underneath the dashboard on the passenger side of the car. Remove the two bolts from the computer's holding bracket and then you can pull the whole assembly straight down. Here you should be able to see the label identifying which ECU you are dealing with. In this case, it is a 122-7165 which was used on 1987 to 1989 model Camaros and Firebirds and 1986 to 1989 Corvettes. Here you can also see a rectangular cover plate. Underneath this you will find the computer's memcall assembly, which we will cover further later. Now we can commence with disconnecting the two ECU connectors, but be certain to disconnect the car's battery first. Simply press down on the blue spring tab and wiggle the connector back and forth as you pull it out. Of course, this operation is more easily conducted with the use of both hands, so it's best not to film a video whilst you do this. Here we get our first look at the new ECU. As you can see, there are three connectors on the 1, 2, 2, 7, 7, 30 computer, two 32 pins and one 24 pin. As you can see, one of the 32 pin connectors on this ECU is yellow. It is keyed different from the black ones and is therefore incompatible. You may reuse the old black connectors from the original 1227165 ECU, but you must source a yellow or green 32 pin connector for the yellow port on this ECU. You may be able to find these on eBay, or if you are fortunate enough to have a local self service auto wrecker nearby, these ECUs and their respective connectors could be found in a multitude of GM vehicles built from approximately 1989 to 1993. Search for anything with the Chevrolet 60 degree 3.1 liter engines in particular. It is highly recommended that you acquire this document to aid in the repinning process. It will provide you with a quick reference for moving pins from the original two connectors to the new three connector configuration for this ECU. This document should be able to be downloaded from the web address at the top right of the first page. In addition, it contains important information on the repinning and wire additions that must take place in the engine compartment, as well as information on spark control methods that can be used. In the case of this particular vehicle, we will be using the original knock control module and wiring it for use with the new ECU. It can be retained and used with only the addition of a resistor to the wiring at its connector, as well as a small modification to the memcal. We will cover these modifications on a later video. If you have acquired a memcal from an original TPI vehicle, the knock control circuits were integrated into the memcal itself, so the external knock module can be bypassed and the other modifications will not be necessary. Here on the bench, we see a comparison of the old and new computers and their respective connectors. To reiterate what was stated earlier, 
the black 32 and 24 pin connectors from the original installation can be reused. However, you must acquire another yellow or green 32 pin connector because the black connectors are keyed differently and will not fit into the sockets on the ECU. In a pinch, it may be possible to shave down the keyed portions of the black connector, and it could be made to fit if that is all that you have at your disposal. As you can see, a green connector can also be used in the yellow ECU socket. Here we can see the difference in the key spacing between the yellow and black 32-pin connectors. Prior to starting the depinning process, we must remove the locking combs from the connectors. These combs serve multiple roles. They separate the wires, they serve as the positive lock for the connector into the ECU, and they provide an additional lock method along with the pin bob to keep the pins from sliding out. In addition, if you look closely at the ends of these combs, you will notice that they have letters and numbers engraved into them. This is how we identify which pin and wire combination will go into each pin position in the connectors. We will now demonstrate the process of removing pins from the connectors. If you have acquired a connector pigtail from a donor car as illustrated here, it is best to remove all the pins and have a bare connector before commencing with the repinning operation. As you can see, the pins themselves have a locking barb which keeps them from pushing out of the connector. The goal will be to push that tab aside so that the pin can slide out. To this end, we can use special purpose tools, as is the red one shown here, or you can use a variety of different things to get the job done. A drill bit of the appropriate size, or even a piece of wire will often suffice. The important thing is that whatever you use fits in the hole tightly, otherwise it will be difficult to release the lock, and the pin can be damaged while pulling it out. The inner holes on the connector correspond with the pins in the ECU. Do not insert your tool here. Where you will want to insert your tool is into the outer holes. Insert the tool fully and then gently pull on the wire end and it should slide out. If it does not, wiggle your tool around until the wire releases. Here we have found that a grease needle is the perfect size and works wonderfully to release the pins.
Now we will continue depinning until we are left with just bare connectors. This will make the repinning process later much easier. Before we commence with the process, I will reiterate that it is essential to have the proper documentation at hand before starting. The aforementioned repinning document is essential, as well as the connector pin out diagrams, for the 165 and 730 ECUs will be extremely helpful to have. The diagrams can be found on the GearHead EFI website and the repeating document and diagrams can also be found at the web address shown at the top right of this page we are now showing. The repinning document will serve to simplify this job greatly. As you can see here, it shows pin numbers and their respective functions, as well as illustrating where each of the pins from the original 165 harness must be placed in the new 730 connector. We may use pin A7 as an example. On the 165, the TCC solenoid is located on connector position A at pin 7. That pin will need to be moved to connector GF at pin 6 on the new 730 connectors. As was mentioned previously, the locking combs on the back side of the connectors have identifying letters and pin numbers molded into them. This information is essential for identifying which pin is for a particular function and where it needs to be moved to. The problem is that these combs will need to be removed in order to depin the connectors, so it is helpful to mark the connector sides with their corresponding letter and identify where pin 1 starts from using a marker or paint pen. The connectors are now marked indicating the pin order and the letter designations. The letters indicate which connector we are dealing with, as well as identifying which row of pins to start counting from. For instance, these connectors are identified as AB and CD. The AB refers to which side of the connector the pin being referenced is on. So if we are looking for pin A6, we would go to connector AB and find row A. Then we count six pins from the left, and that will be pin A6. The numbers are also embossed on the front side of the connector, but be warned, they are extremely small, and unless your eyes are youthful, you may need to use a magnifying glass to see them. As you can see here, we have our new connectors de-pinned and ready to receive the pins and wires from the original harness. This is the easiest way to carry out this process and will help to minimize errors. Simply. Go one pin at a time, starting at the top of the repinning document, and remove the wire from the 165 connector. Then find its new position on the correct 730 connector and insert it there. Then carry on to the next pin in the list, and always remember to count twice and insert once. Some pin errors could result in a destroyed ECU at the least, or a fire at the worst. The 
The diagram currently being displayed will be particularly useful. It illustrates the connectors themselves, combined with the description of each pin in the ECU harness and what they are for. You will note that not all pins in the connectors are populated. Some of these are inputs or outputs, which are for use on different applications and are not needed for the 1989F body that we are carrying out this modification on. This now concludes part one of this series. In part two, we will commence with the pin swapping process. If you find this video of interest, please subscribe to the channel and like and comment on the video.